What is going on Mystery Tackle Box channel? Today we are going to be talking about lipless crankbait fishing. So we're gonna open up this box. We have quite a few baits here from Carl's Bait and Tackle. And let me just show you what we're dealing with. We're gonna be throwing three different lipless crankbaits today. We have three people in the boat, so we're all going to be covering a different one. And I'm gonna break down where you should be throwing lipless crankbaits, why I like to throw lipless crankbaits in the spring, and kind of the subtle differences between these three different lipless crankbaits. But let me just show you guys the baits that we are tossing today. For number one, we have the Guggen Squad Clutch, brand new by Catchco. Just came on the market a few months ago or so. Uh, number two, we have the Carl's Bait and Tackle Thwacker lipless crankbait. And number three, we have the Jenko Fishing lipless crankbait. So we're gonna get to fishing, tie all these up. I think I'm gonna throw the Guggen Squad Clutch. Jim is gonna throw the Carl's Bait and Tackle Thwacker. And my boy, Zach, is gonna throw this Jenko Fishing one. But we're gonna break down why you should be throwing these baits and hopefully catch a bunch of fish along the way. So stay tuned guys, if you wanna learn about lipless crankbait fishing. That's one. Got one? Yep. Oh, Little guy. On the old Carl's bait and tackle thwacker, she strikes first. We're fishing this point right here. We're picking it apart with all three different lipless crankbaits and Jim just chucked one right back in this little pocket right here. Caught the first bass of the day. So that's kind of textbook. Pre-spawn conditions, we're fishing this point right here and the fish are starting to move back, especially since we're on a power plant lake. The water temperatures are pushing 60, 65 degrees, depending on where you're at in the lake. And uh, that fish is kind of up in this little pocket here, kind of a little spawning area. But first fish of the day goes to the Carl's Bay and Tackle Thwacker. Gonna have to see which one of these lipless crankbaits catches the most bass. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is location. And the first area that I like to target pre-spawn bass with a lipless crankbait is the inside of points. That first cove, right when you come off of a main lake point, it's one of the first areas that those bass are gonna go and spawn. So as you guys just saw, the first bass that we landed of the day, Jim caught on that Carl's Bait and Tackle Thwacker right on the inside of that point right there. So that was probably a pre-spawn buck bass moving up, getting ready to make a bed and get ready for the spawn. So the next clip you're gonna see, we continue to run that pattern and we catch a ton of fish doing it. And then later on in the video, we're gonna talk about some other areas that you guys can target pre-spawn bass. You got one, buddy? Yeah, I got one. You got one on, on the Jenko? Small. Dang, dude. Like a... I'm not sure. This is the literal same thing that Jim just caught his fish in too. We're, at, we're fishing another point now, guys, and uh, right in this little pocket. Same exact pattern that Jim just caught that bass in. Zach just caught one on that little Janko fishing lipless crankbait. Two little bass, though. Those are not big ones. That's not what we're looking for, but we are kind of piecing together a little bit of a pattern, it seems like. That is good to see. All the little coves and pockets. A lot of these fish are probably moving up there, getting ready to spawn. But so far we've just ran into those little buck bass. We need to find those big pre-spawn females. So our first pattern worked out. We were running those main lake points, those little inside pockets of the main lake points. We caught quite a few fish doing that. And pretty much every single one that we rolled up to, we would catch at least one bass, but we did not catch any big ones. So we decided instead of catching these little male pre-spawn buck bass, we need to go find out where those big pre-spawn females are living. And the second location that I like to target pre-spawn bass with a lipless crankbait is main lake flats. Anywhere where the contour lines are super flat, leading back into a spawning pocket, a lot of those big pre-spawn females are gonna get set up right there and they're gonna move their way back further into the pocket as they move further into the spawn. That was a good rule of the year. I told him I'll never do that again. Oh, there we go. Yeah, dude, crushed it. Crushed it. That's a good one. On the, oh, dude, get the net on that one. Get the net on that one. That, that's a good one. On the Guggen, on the Guggen squad clutch. Yes, yeah, son. Yes, yeah, son. That's a three pounder. That's what's up. Look at that. And that's exactly how you want him to eat that lipless crankbait. Cross her freaking mouth. So boys, let me tell you, we're out here filming this little lipless crankbait video for you guys, and we do not have ideal conditions. Really, you want wind, you want clouds, and we have bright bluebird skies, and uh, the spot we're fishing right now is flat calm, but that is probably over three pounds though, with how fat she is. 3.9 pounds. Jesus, dude, 3.9, that's a four pound bass just about. So boys and girls, that is what throwing a lipless crankbait in the springtime can yield for you too. An almost four pound bass 
and we have less than ideal conditions right there but throwing that thing right on this flat right here a lot of really good sparse kind of grass and these reeds and everything perfect for those spawning conditions that these fish are going to be moving up in and starting to make some babies as you can see right there that's a big old pre-spawn female so we're going to get her back in the water and hopefully catch a few more fish just like that for you there she goes so just like that, we went from catching those little pre-spawn buck bass to catching a four pound pre-spawn female. And that's really key when you're fishing in the pre-spawn, when you're fishing springtime, you want to move around, you want to cover a lot of water because those bigger fish, they're going to group up. So a lot of times when you're fishing in the spring, if you're catching fish, but you're not around the right kind of quality, keep moving around until you start catching those quality fish. And chances okay. are, you're going to catch a lot more of them too. Yeah, buddy. That fish smacked it once. The old right and there. then came back for it. All right, another fish, 14, 15 incher, a little belly on him. Oh, that ate it. That ate it. Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. That's a nice one. Oh, on the Carl's bait and tackle thwacker. Warm water, that is some warm water. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Give me a bath! <laughs> so at this point, we had the pattern pretty dialed in. We were catching those fish on main lake points and main lake flats, leading back into spawning pockets. But now I wanna talk about why I love throwing a lipless crankbait in the spring and why you guys should try it out too. And that is because it has to be one of the most effective search baits of all time. You can literally chuck and wind that thing all day long your arm's not going to get tired. You could cover so much water. And in the springtime, that is so key. I mean, you could throw a spinner bait, you could throw a chatter bait, and you could cover some water, but they're going to be moving a little bit slower, and you're not going to be able to fish as many spots as if you're throwing a lipless crankbait. You could chuck and wind that thing, and those fish are still going to eat it. And that brings me to point number two. The reason that you can move a lipless crankbait so much faster than, say, a chatterbait or a spinnerbait or some other sort of search bait in the spring is because it has that really, really tight wobble. It's not going to move a lot of water, and those fish are still going to be attracted to it since it's not displacing as much water as, say, like a chatterbait or a spinnerbait or something like that. So it's going to move through the water column really, really quick, but it's still going to keep that nice, tight profile, and those fish that are in colder water are still going to eat that thing. So... You want to cover as much water as humanly possible with a lipless crankbait in the spring. Some of the biggest bass in the lake are going to be up shallow feeding, and you just want to fish as much as you possibly can, guys. There's a couple of them in here. You want to go back a little bit? What do you want to do? Do you want to go back a little bit and fish at that point or not? Oh, I mean, we might go. Oh, I got one. Yeah? I got one. Decent one. Decent one. Oh, yeah, buddy. Really hooked up? Oh, yeah, buddy. Want to grab the net on this one? It might be a decent one. Oh, she's got one hook only. She's not that big. She's not that big. We'll take her though. We'll take her though. We'll take her. There we go, boys and girls. There's another two pounder right after Jim just caught that two and a half. Probably like a two, two and a quarter for me. Not too shabby. Yeah, one. One singular favorite crop. What are you doing your St. Petty's Day? Yep. Got one. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Good one. Good one, son. Good one on the old clutch. Back in this pocket, dude. They're probably coming back here to spawn. Oh, yeah, dude. It's, it's another, like, three-pounder. Get him, Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, that wasn't the nut job we needed right there. Jimmy. If I didn't have the go, if I didn't have the GoPro in my hand, I would have caught that one. Messing around with the GoPro, and also let me show you something right here, Jimmy. It extends. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Look at this net right here. Look at that. You could have got, you could have got that fish right there. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's a three pounder. So all jokes aside, guys, I did lose that last three pounder, but we caught quite a few really solid fish out there on the lake today, throwing lipless crankbaits and really covering a ton of water, as I was just talking about in that last little tip right there. Uh, the very, very last thing I want to leave you guys with and talk about is the subtle differences between the lipless crankbaits that we were throwing that day and really just all lipless crankbaits in general, why there's so many and why you guys probably should have a few different ones on your deck in the spring. There's a ton of different baits out there, guys. You guys already know all the different brands. They all pretty much make the same stuff, but you know, their own version of it. 
And lipless crankbaits are no exception. There's dozens of different kinds of lipless crankbaits that you guys can buy. Uh, we are throwing three different ones in the video today, as you guys saw. And every single one has subtle differences. They move a little bit different through the water. Some have a little bit of a tighter action. Some rip out of the grass a little bit easier than others. Stuff like that that just sets them apart. And lipless crankbaits are one of the only baits where I will have a few different ones on deck at all times when I'm fishing in the spring. And that's because I've seen it firsthand when I've been fishing before where one lipless crankbait brand is getting bit far more than the other one. And then the next day, it could be the exact opposite. One example I have of this is I was just down in Florida for the FLW College National Championship. And me and my partner, we were both throwing different lipless crankbaits. One day he was getting bit, the next day I was getting bit. And it seems like there's just something about the tiny, tiny differences where the fish could be in one mood one day and then a completely different mood the next where you gotta make sure that you have all of the tools in your tackle box to catch the fish on that particular day. So all I could say guys is check out the baits I was throwing in this video, check out all sorts of different lipless crankbaits, find out which ones work for you. And on a day, if you're not catching them on a certain lipless crankbait, try switching it up, just stuff like that. It's all about experimenting guys, get out there, cover a ton of water. I cannot stress that enough. That's gotta be the number one tip that you guys take away from this video. When you're fishing in the pre-spawn with the lipless crankbait, just throw that thing everywhere. Anywhere where there's some shallow grass, you could rip it out of there. That's where you're gonna get bit. But thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. Thank you to Mr. Tacklebox for letting me take over the channel once again. And I hope to catch you guys in the next one with some more tips. So thanks for watching, guys.